Hey y'all, I'm here at the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston at the Glassell School of Art. I just completed a two week course with Creative Vets, a veterans nonprofit organization where they send vets out to do a music program and learn to play guitar and write songs. And they also have an art program. Well, we just finished the art program and we all have art out. And I want to show you my piece and talk to you about it. So let's check it out here. Okay, so first thoughts here. Um, I will to give you a second to formulate what you think. Um, kind of what you think. I will scoot closer in just a second, but from here, what I'm trying to show is the layout. If you just think of a silhouette or just the outer perimeter, what does it look like? You have tall vertical walls. The outside of the flag looks kind of like a pitch of a roof. And then above that, you have a cross, right? So, did you guess a church? <laughs> Looks like a church. Anyway, as we scoot forward, we're going to look at the main feature here. This is basically a phone. And in the background of the phone, you have different colors, just like your own phone you have different images or colors or themes and mine has red at the top and it flows into a blue that is actually epoxy because I work with epoxy and that actually symbolizes my past of how angry I used to be so it's featured in red and today I've learned to cool off quite a bit so guess what happens when you cool off oh, it turns blue also, very similar, the bugle that's above the top, you blow in hot air, out comes cold air. But anyway, let's talk about each of these tiles here. Each of these tiles, quote unquote, uh, represent an app, so to say. And each app has a, on your phone would have a title of the app underneath it, but I didn't put the title of the app. I put a title of a song with some lyrics on it just a little bit of lyrics nothing major not the whole song sort of fit because each tile each app each theme has its own song that's related to that life event but before I go into there let me show you this if you scan this QR code you can pause it but you can also just look on my YouTube playlist this is a playlist of every song that I'm about to mention over here but also, you can pause right here if you want to read this description. I'm just going to say, look into the life of Corey, which is the name of this piece. Because if you think about anybody, if you had their phone and you kind of looked into their phone and looked around a little bit, you'd kind of figure out what kind of person they are a little bit. So this is like a look into the life of me because you're looking into my phone and each of these are apps. So you kind of get the point. Anyway, um... I'm going to start chronologically, top left to bottom right, you lead left to right, top to bottom, and I'm just going to give a little description of each piece, each tile, each app, so I can explain kind of what they mean and what they are. Okay, so up here on the top left we have a broken heart. The broken heart represents when I was five years old. My mom passed away and I found her dead in her bed. At her funeral, they played the song Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. So let's look a little more at that. It's just a little few verses or notes that started that song. And that was uh, my introduction to trauma at five years old. Kind of sucked. If you look really closely, you can see in dark letters because that was a dark time of my life, mom at the top rip rest in peace mom all right moving on in the middle piece here we have a baseball tile baseball app um, so my entire childhood and some of my adult life I've actually played baseball and sorry I'm trying to get steady here um, I met my real dad about 10 years ago, so I kind of grew up without a real dad. I 
was raised by my grandparents, uh, especially after my mom passed away. And my grandpa um, put me into baseball, and I played baseball a lot. And um, I grew up watching baseball, playing baseball, learning all about baseball, and my grandpa taught me most of it. And all of my baseball memories are with my granddad. Um, so this represents the loss of my grandpa when I was 16. He passed away, and uh, he introduced me to this song, The Greatest, by Kenny Rogers. And that's why I have that song titled there. Uh, so when I hear that song, it just reminds me of my granddad. Um, I loved Cal Ripken Jr. Um, he was number eight, and he's my all-time favorite player. So I grew up playing being number eight, so that's why the eight is in there. Um, at the time, I didn't know this until later on in my adult years, way after my grandpa passed away, but my house wasn't a very safe place for me to be because my grandma was always taking pills and kind of getting inebriated, and it wasn't really a safe environment for me to be in. So my granddad took me to play baseball all the time. And um, I was always gone, always on a field, always playing baseball, rarely at home. So I then realized that home was not really a good, safe place for me. And that's why as an adult, it's hard for me to stay home because it's been instilled into my childhood that just to go, go somewhere, be away. And I'm still learning to this day to try to just stay home because today, home is safe for me not like it was when I was a kid and it's really hard to tell um, the difference between you know 30 something years ago to today but I'm still learning and trying to slow down to be present in the house more often but anyway I when I hear the greatest from Kenny Rogers it just reminds me of my baseball days and and my grandpa going to my games and teaching me baseball and just the good old times with him I miss Papa. The next one, well, actually, before I get into this one, after my granddad passed away, um, in this gap here, 16, he passed away. I joined the Army after my junior year of high school uh, in the Texas National Guard. And then shortly after joining, um, actually, it was right about a year later, um, I gave my life over to Christ as a high school senior. And then a few months later, uh, I did more Army training. And then uh, I did a year of college. And after that year of college, I was deployed to Iraq. And this is a country silhouette of the country of Iraq. Um, the reason I have this Three Days Grace song, Riot, is because I was on a mission one day. And I listened to music inside the vehicle. Um, we just played like an earbud through our laptops in one ear while we had our comms in our other ear. And the song, this song came on, Let's Start a Riot. And shortly after that, not even a minute into this song, uh, we started taking fire and I was getting shot at and it was pretty scary. I had some bullets whizz by my head, which was a very big wake up call. Um, Clearly, I'm still here today, so you can only imagine how that battle ended. Um, I'm here, they ain't. And so this also uh, symbolizes just the other combat that I've seen when I was over there in Iraq. We had IEDs blowing up. We had mortar attacks. There was, of course, the small arms fire that I just mentioned. Um, I got through all of it, but it was traumatizing um, because I've never experienced those kind of things before. I was 19 years old when I got there. I turned 20 in Iraq. Um, I was engaged at the time I deployed. Um, and then me and my ex fiance split up while I was over there, which caused a major depression. I was being bullied by my own guys in my unit. I was the youngest guy there. They treated me not just like a younger brother, but they, they overdid it. They, they could have stopped, but they kind of harassed me a little too much and, it wasn't very pleasant. Um, I didn't like it and, and they didn't stop. So I got depressed and 
I honestly was trying to die for my country over there because I really couldn't deal with the loss of my ex-fiance and getting bullied all the time. Um, I kind of just quit caring and I was in a way not trying to commit suicide because I've never been suicidal but I was like you know what if I go out I'm going out in a good way by honoring my country and serving it so this is a good be a good way to die which clearly didn't happen because they failed at every attempt they tried <laughs> um, also um, the thing in the back of my mind at that time that kept me going was my grandma was still home and she was sick and so I always wanted to come back home to see my grandma. So that was a little bit of motivation to give some kind of care a little bit. So anyway, long story short, I got through all the trauma, all the combat of Iraq, and I came back home. Uh, and I was able to visit my grandma for a few more months before she passed away um, just after I turned 21. All right, here's the next row of apps, second row. We're going to the left side and we're gonna talk about this one right here. So I have an image of a motorcycle. Um, this app, <laughs> uh, Tile, um, represents uh, a motorcycle wreck that I was involved in after Iraq when I got back home. Um, long story short, I ended up keeping the motorcycle uh, I should let insurance take it, but I fought for it to keep it. And I redid the motorcycle in a blue and purple. That's why I got the colors. And all these have meanings, the colors behind them. But I'm not going to talk about all of them. But this one I like because it was the color of the bike that I turned it into. Uh, but anyway, I was uh, riding one day. Uh, I just left church. And this <laughs> this story is probably the longest story of all these apps right here. This is the most, outside of my mom passing away, physically, this is the most traumatic experience I've in, encountered in my life. A uh, lady was on her cell phone. She ran through a stop sign. I thought I was going to T-bone her, so I leaned left to try to go in front of her to beat her car. But then she went faster, and I ended up T-boning her anyway. Flying over her car, landing on my head instantly being knocked out my body rag dolls i slide into the curb into oncoming traffic i flew over the bed of two trucks the beds of two trucks and just nearly missed being run over by them trucks and uh as soon as i hit my head on the ground i was instantly knocked out uh and i was knocked out for eight hours i woke up in a hospital and i was later released from the hospital the same night i literally walked out with just a broken collarbone and I found out years later on I actually broke my nose and my elbow during that wreck I didn't know that until I saw medical records later on because I didn't really care at that time I was just like hey I get to walk out of the hospital broken collarbone because I clearly had a sling on my arm and that's all I really cared that hey I just walked out so anyway um, this tile is re very relatable to this one and I'm gonna get to that one in a minute, but I gotta talk to about this one. They all kind of go together, but I wanted this one down here. So let's talk about this tile right here. I saw God today. This is a song by George Strait. <clears throat> and this whole story is a testimony of its own, but I wanna talk about it uh, and really explain it. Like I said, it's gonna be the longest one, but it's well worth the listen. Now, during this wreck, this whole thing, this whole mess, I believe most likely that I either experienced a real life death situation or it was a dream later that evening after I left the hospital and went home. But um, it's just crazy how this happened. I I won't get to the part of why it's with this song here. I saw God today. But uh, when I left the hospital, um, I actually got all the discharge paperwork. I got the eyewitness report. I got the police statement and everything. And I called the eyewitness and I said, hey, this Corey uh, lady is like, I don't know who you are. I'm the guy that was on the motorcycle wreck. She said, oh my gosh. 
I thought you died. I said, no. Uh, just left the hospital. I got a broken collarbone, but I didn't die. And she was just like, wow. Because when she said that she saw what she saw and how my body hit the ground and rolled and all that and I was motionless, she thought for sure that I died. But I got to tell you this. I want you to look at me when I say this part. Uh, <laughs> this was crazy. I, I wanted to meet with her to say, what was your view? Like, what did you see? I want to know. You know, because clearly I was knocked out and I don't remember anything. I, all I remember is driving up to the point of impact. I don't even know if I got hit or she hit me, but I want to know what you saw. So anyway, um, we agreed to meet the next day uh, so we could talk about this. And I said, uh, she asked, where do you want to meet at? I said, well, let's meet at the crash site. That way I can see kind of like where you were, where I was, and what you saw and how you saw it and all that. So I could put myself into your shoes to try to see me in a way. So she said, okay. And uh, the next day I met up with her and her jaw just hit the floor. She looked at me like I was a ghost. She could not believe I was physically there because the last she saw me, she could have sworn up and down that I was dead. Um, in the story I'm about to tell you, I, I should have died. So I get there, meet her. After her disbelief of me physically being there, she hugs me. And then I was like, okay, here's what I remember. She came out and I went in front of her and she hit me. That's all I remember. She said, nope. Sort of. The lady ran to the stop sign. I did go out, but then she kept going and I hit her and flew over top. Went over the beds of those trucks, hit my head, instantly knocked out, slide, ragdolled, um, unconscious. And then she said that they pulled over, her and her husband, they were trying to stop traffic from hitting me because I was in the oncoming lanes. They stopped and after that, um, one of them called the police, paramedics started coming on the way. Uh, so in the back, and this kind of ties into the song, <coughs> uh, there were sirens in the background you could hear. And anyway, she said that uh, once the medics got there, they had rolled me onto my back and I'm wearing all my motorcycle gear, um, but my helmet, I had it on and the chin strap was just loose, just barely touching, but it wasn't like tight, you know? So when I hit the ground, the helmet actually popped off, but the chin strap caught me on the nose and pulled my nose up. And that's what broke my nose. I didn't even know my nose was broken. It didn't even hurt. Uh, but I saw the statement from the hospital that it was broke and it broke the elbow. I went up, I came down on my head on my right side, the shoulder gave way and broke the collarbone. Um, definitely had a head injury. I was knocked out for eight plus hours. Broke my nose, broke my elbow. And I thought I broke my hip, but I didn't. Uh, but landing on that hip, it just, it was really bruised. It's crazy, the bruise hurt worse than any other thing that was damaged, you know, the broken bones and stuff, but the bruise hurt the worst. So anyway, uh, she said when I was laying on my back and the medics were assessing me, I'm unconscious. Um, she didn't know if I died or not because they didn't, you know, announce, oh, he's breathing. So she, uh, said that they unzipped my jacket and inside my jacket, the little pocket, there was a church pamphlet that fell. And uh, she saw the, the Christian Life Center and that's where I got saved at. Um, and she said, oh my gosh, he just came from church. And she said in that moment, right then and there, that she prayed to God that I'd be okay. Um, I actually met with her about six months ago and this was 09, 13, 14 years after the event happened. So 14 years later, and I told her, I said, well, your prayer worked, prayer is powerful. And I'm a firm believer in that. Although I do know that this was also God's will, if God wanted me to die that day, he would have taken me home. But I think that your prayer helped and God's plan for me was not to go home that day. Uh, but I said, thank you for praying uh, that I'd be all right. And it did happen. I actually did just leave church. Um, that morning, I swung by to see my buddy, and uh, 
He works at a fire station. So they're also, you know, EMTs. And when I was leaving there, um, he jinxed me. He said, hey, dude, don't be doing nothing stupid. I don't want to come scoop you up off the road. Well, 30 minutes later, I was getting scooped up off the road because um, the lady ran a stop sign talking on her cell phone. I guess I came on, so I was trying to exit to go get some gas. And, uh, yeah, I got scooped up, and I was like, I can't believe it. Woody was his nickname. I said, dang it, Woody freaking jinxed me, dude. Um, so... The lady, she prays that I'd be okay, and I ended up being okay. A broken collarbone, a few minor broken bones. But uh, when I was at the hospital, after I woke up, uh, the doctor was just in shock and awe, believe, disbelief. He said, I don't see how you're at least not paralyzed. After the witness report that I got, you landed on your head the way you did, your neck should be broken, and you should be paralyzed right now. I had full feeling all the way to my feet. I got up, I walked around the hospital, I walked out of there that night. And I can't say, one, why I deserved it to be able to walk out, or two, how I wasn't paralyzed. Because if the medical professionals was in disbelief, so was I. Um, I know it was God, though. There was no way that anybody should have, been, one, survive the wreck, or if they, or not survive the wreck, but even if they did survive the wreck, would not be paralyzed. And because I went down and the way that my head hit the ground just gave way and my neck just like straight over, like hard. Well, it went that way. <laughs> um, so it should have broke, but it didn't. So I know that God was with me um, when that happened. So yeah, she, she tells me her story. And that's the same story that I tell to this day, is her eyewitness statement of it. Because I don't remember anything after the point of impact. Uh, I actually thought that I got hit, but no, I actually drove into her door. But, um, I, I walked away, I walked away, I walked out of the hospital with just a broken collarbone when I should have been paralyzed, if not dead. So, uh, I became very grateful for my life. Um, I was very apologetic and, and sorry to God for living in sin and just not doing what I should be doing as a Christian. Um, all of this happened one month after we found out that my ex-wife was pregnant with our first kid. And we weren't married. So I'm already sinning right there by about to have a baby and I'm not even married. <laughs> And I knew that uh, as a kid growing up, I always wanted to give my kids what I never had when I was a dad. And all this ties into this song um, in this life event here. Um, There's all the symbolism and everything. Uh, it, was, it was a lot, a lot to go through. Uh, emotionally, I think more painful than physically. Uh, and I was in a lot of physical pain, but uh, it's awesome to tell this story. Sometimes I get choked up in it, but it just makes me be grateful. And I'll show you here in a second, but under the Bible app, I put second chance because God gave me a second chance that I did not deserve. I should have died that day, February 22nd, 2009. That was my alive day. Um, his grace and mercy was on me, and I didn't deserve any of it. Um, but I'm very grateful and, and thankful that he did spare my life. And even after that, you know, for a couple months and even years that after, my gratitude just dwindled away, and I started living in sin again. And taking advantage of what was given to me. But also know that at the same time, it would not have been fair to my daughter if I wasn't here. Not because it was my promise to give my kids what I never had, but I guess he didn't want my 
little girl to go through what I've had to go through and grow up without a parent. So uh, I was given a second chance in life and to, to be that dad that I promised uh, I would give my kids. Uh, and I've been given that opportunity. And even after dealing with a lot of the struggles of that, um, I've had to been reminded that I was ruining it, I was throwing it away, and I needed to be more grateful and all this other stuff. Um, and the people that were telling me this weren't wrong. Um, I was taking too much advantage of it and it wasn't fair to my kids. And so I had to like check myself and, and be held accountable so I can give my kids what they never had and that's that dad they deserve. So uh, that was pretty uh, eye-opening, I guess you could say. Uh, but because of the, the incident of the wreck, there's a couple things that kind of go along with it. Uh, I got a lot of major PTSD right after. I started driving with road rage very bad. And I was angry a lot. And I felt every time I drove, my, I was in fear of my life every time I saw a cell phone. So when I saw people driving and talking on their phones or texting on their phones or emailing or Facebook and MySpace and whatever it was they were doing, if you had your phone in your hand while you had a steering wheel in your hand, it was my goal at that time to run you off the road because now I'm in fear of my life. And it was something I couldn't control. Uh, anger took over because I was in fight or flight and I was fight mode all the time. Um, and it was bad. Um, it was very, very hard to control, but the phone itself was a major trigger for me. Hence, the silhouette of this bottom piece that I just showed you a while ago. And I'm gonna show you again. It's set up like a phone. It's meant to, because this phone is blown up to be in your face. You're looking into the life of me, but you're also looking at the phone itself as my trigger that took me years to get a grasp up and to be able to handle it and overcome it. Now I get a little frustrated with it, but I don't get road ragey with it. <laughs> um, but uh, I had a friend tell me one day that this isn't my story. This is God's story. I'm just a character in his story and he's using me to tell it to glorify him and to show how powerful and awesome that he is that he can literally put you through anything and pull you out of it and he did exactly that for me and I thought that was pretty cool but let's get into the song here in the beginning of the song uh, he talks about uh, standing by her side while she's in the hospital labor delivery about to have a baby uh, that's how the song starts you know and I knew that the, she was cooking you know in the belly and this was in February. My daughter was born in September. So this was seven months prior to the birth. But we knew it was coming. And the song ends in it. So we're going to kind of skip that part. Just knowing that there's a baby on the way. Uh, the next day when I went to meet the eyewitness. Um, pretty much everything in the middle of the song happened. Uh, I was walking on the sidewalk. After the lady left. I was just kind of walking around. Taking it all in. And trying to figure it all out. And why I'm still alive. When I deserve to die the day before. And uh, in the song, he mentions a flower pushing up through the concrete, like it was right there planted for me to see. But I didn't see a flower. I actually saw weeds, but I compare it. They're both vegetation. Um, I was I parked in the small shopping center, actually right in front of where I was about to get gas. I mean, I was 100 yards from my destination. 100 yards. Uh, but as I'm walking back to my vehicle, uh, there's a couple that came out of this subway um, and they were, they were holding hands. And I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to make this story sound better. This actually freaking happened. There was a guy and a girl holding hands, came out of the subway, and when she turned, you could see that she had a belly on her. In the song, he mentioned that she had that glow. She was starting to show. The girl was pregnant. And, and I've actually seen that. I was like, well, and I didn't think of anything of it at that time, but I do remember seeing that because your body remembers trauma. And I remember the details that was told to me the day after, you know, and it was still traumatic to me because uh, that's what kind of ties my story because I was unconscious. So the story had to be filled in for me. Anyway, I get to the vehicle. 
I get in my truck and radio was off. I was just sitting there absorbing all this information, taking it in and just being grateful. I look up into the sky because, you know, God's towards the sky, right? So I look up into the sky and I'm just like, God, I'm so sorry, but thank you. Why did you do this? Why did you spare my life? I don't deserve this, but thank you. I appreciate it. And all this conversation was going on. Um, the song mentioned that he was looking in, meditating in the sky and it splashes of red and, and amber. But um, I didn't really see reds or amber. It was actually a blue clear sky and it was a pretty sky. But I know that God was up there and put that sky there. So it was a beautiful scene for me. And if you think about the day before when I was getting scooped up, there were sirens. Um, people were honking horns. That's all mentioned in the song. That happened in reality. The, the ambulances that came, they had their sirens on. People were honking right after it happened because people were slamming on the brakes so they don't run over me. And people were, you know, in the road, you know, stopping traffic and honking. It, it was chaos. And all that happened. And then if you fast forward seven months later, on September 2nd, my daughter was born. And that kind of reverts back to the beginning of the song. Because he mentioned that I got my face pressed up against the nursery glass. And there's my little girl, tiny pink socks. My name's on her wrist. Um, she's got her, her daddy's nose and her mama's eyes or is it vice versa? I don't know. Brain injury. I forget. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I think it causes me to be dyslexic too because I say things backwards a lot unintentionally. Um, I think yeah, he's, she's got her mama's eyes and her daddy's nose. My brand new baby girl. She's a miracle. I saw God today because kids are a gift from God. And I saw the birth. You know my first witness of a child being born um, which is awesome. The chorus of the song is absolutely amazing. You know, it says, you know, his fingerprints are everywhere. I know he's here, but I don't look near as often as I should. Yeah, I know I should. Being convicted because I haven't been shooting <laughs> uh, lately or at that time. Um, and I definitely didn't deserve it. But the craziest part about this entire story and why that I chose this song is after I got done talking to God and looking in the sky at the pretty blues and just wondering why I deserved what I didn't deserve or why I got what I didn't deserve, I'm about to put the car with the truck in, uh, you know, reverse to drive to leave to head back home. And I turn the radio on and guess what song came on. I saw God today. But the coolest part, and it kind of gets funny too, a lot of that is sad and just everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in that. What actually happened, I don't know if it was reality or the dream, I'm going to go back to what I mentioned earlier, and here's that part, is either right when I hit my head and was instantly knocked out I think in that moment I probably actually did die and I was brought back to life maybe because of the lady's prayer or because what I thought took hours happened in that fast or was this a dream later that night when I got home from the hospital before I met the eyewitness I'm not sure I don't know and I will probably never know was it a dream or was it reality either way Here's what happened in the reality dream. After my body hits and I rolled to the curb, the eyewitness quoted, he ragdolled. So after I stopped ragdolling, I was motionless. And that's when she thought for sure that I died. That looking as an outsider in on my physical human body on the side of this road imagine the ghost or the soul of your body leaving your physical body and I'm gonna turn this around to show you I started low crawling up the stairway to heaven and that's what this represents uh, I was tired miserable whatever but I was low crawling up to heaven 
I get up there, there was no pearly gates, there was no St. Peter's or whatever. It was a door. Well, I'm still laying on my belly, hands and knees, and I knocked on the bottom of the door, this big white door, and the door opens wide, and standing there is Jesus, just like this. Well, his arms weren't up, but I just use this as a symbol, because Jesus, uh, arms wide open. Feel like a welcoming home kind of gesture. So anyway, um, he looks around, he does not see me, and I reach up and I tapped him on the foot, because remember, I'm still laying on my belly on these stairs. <clears throat> and he looks down and he immediately notices Corey Strauff. I was like, hey, I'm down here. He says, Corey, <laughs> I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> then he kicks me in my face and the ghost, my soul, starts doing all these backflips down the staircase to heaven and the soul flops back into my human body, my physical body. And for a brief second, I woke up in pain and started to reach for my collarbone and then I immediately passed back out again. Because the lady told me she thought I died and then I did for a brief second wake up in pain and then back out again. And then she don't know if like that was the second time coming and thought that I for sure died because it happened so fast. And I don't know if that was a dream or if that was reality. But what was funny was, and I'll always remember this, whether it be a dream or did it actually happen, Jesus, God actually in, in Jesus' human form, says, Corey, I'm not done with you yet. That was a clear sign that I still have a mission on earth to complete. <laughs> and I guess that's my own promise to my kids to give them what I never had, and that's a dad. So I had to come back down here. I also take up his other commandments to be fruitful and multiply, because I have four kids, and to be a dad. Give my kids what I never had. And God gave me the ability to do that. So I want to go back up because it kind of ties into this app over here. Like I said, all this is related. Second chance. A couple years after therapy, I'm sorry, after the wreck, I started going to therapy, TBI treatment. And I'm going to tell you about this, uh, the app itself, but then the song that's tied to this, the second chance. By Sh um, yeah, Shinedown. I love Shinedown. Um, when I was in therapy, I told the same story. This same story right here about the whole wreck and seeing God that day. Oh, there's a theme. Let me back up. <laughs> I get knocked down, I get back up again. You're never going to keep me down because it seems like I'm a cat. I just keep on living. I didn't really have any other close, like, life or death threatening calls, but. I keep getting knocked on my butt, and I just keep getting back up and fighting it because I'm resilient. And I feel like I'm a tiger, and I can pounce back. I'm like a lion, you know. God's gave me that. But when I was in therapy, I was telling this story about the bike wreck and how I saw God that day. And my therapist says, Corey, in your story, I heard you mention the term second chance. God gave you a life. He gave you a second chance at life. And I said, true. He hit me hard when he said, what are you doing with that second chance? Oh, man. Talk about feeling convicted. Holy crap. This was in 2018. So this was nine years after the wreck happened. I said, man, you got me messed up, bro. Because... I've been throwing it away. I've not been grateful for my second chance. I'm screwing it up. That's what I'm doing. But actually, what I told him is, I'm trying to keep it clean here, but when he said, what are you doing with your second chance? I said, I'm effing it up. And I was. Because I was not being the dad I needed to be. I was not being the husband I was called to be. I was not being a good friend. I had all this anger in the background because it was hard for me to deal with my previous traumas, my injuries, because I wasn't getting the true healing that I ever needed. So this was like a learning process for me. And this was almost a decade later. But when he said second chance, I was like, I actually like that song called second chance. So I try to relate it to my life. Uh, 
the meaning in that actual song is completely far off from my meaning of it, but it is a good song, and I just try to relate it to God being my parent, you know, and me responding to him as my dad. Um, but anyway, I said I need to fix it. I was given a second chance for a reason. Let's turn my life around. And I started to, but let's back up. Not so far back nine years prior. So this happens, and I just want to show you this piece here of the cross and what it represents. So if you look at this cross, follow it up to the top. Just look at the shape of a cross. And we're going to get to this piece here in a little bit. But look at this cross. Look at the app. Up and down from number eight down to bottom and then left or right, motorcycle to the orange one. It represents a cross in the Bible is in the middle of the um, app, the phone, whatever, so to say. So I gotta keep God at the center of my life. Then after going through a divorce, um, I got full custody of my older two kids. And the dance, not really a theme for this, but it's more related to my mom. The Dance by Garth Brooks was my mom's favorite song. Me and my mom never got that dance, but I'm able to give that dance to my kids because I'm here for them. Then got remarried, had a couple more kids, and then almost losing my wife because of my stupidity. I uh, didn't really have a wake up call, but I knew I needed to change some things. And I went for a drive. I heard this song by Jake Owen called Starting With Me. And it basically states, if I look back, I'd not like what I've seen. I need to change a whole lot of things and that starts with me. So that's that song uh, with the remarriage and kids and uh, you know, being the dad I need to be lost. This can be a lot, so much in and of its own. Kill the Noise by Papa Roach. I have a condition called hyperacusis where I'm super sensitive to noise which causes headaches and a lot of times I just want it to be quiet so I don't have to hear it but also a loss of control, loss of discipline, uh, loss of fighting with my demons. Uh, life just really sucked and that was through all of this there was so much loss in all of this mess up here uh, all around and it was very hard for me to deal with everything because I always covered up all my sadness from my mom with anger. Every time I get sad, I want to be mad. I want to be mean. I don't want to feel sad. I don't want to feel hurt. I want other people's, I want to belittle them so I can make myself bigger and better and better than them so I don't have to feel sadness and pain. And I did that, and it wasn't right. It wasn't fair. So I lost control. And I love the song. This song means so much to me now, today. I just want all this mess and noise to stop. Uh, so, I knew I needed help and I needed to start with me. When I finally admitted I had control problems and anger issues, I started to get some healing. I went to this program, multiple programs. I went to one called Warrior Path, P-A-T-H-H. -H. There's two H's. It stands for Progressive and Alternative training for healing heroes and in there I walked through a labyrinth I didn't even know what a labyrinth was until I got there but we carried a rock it took about five minutes to get to the center and then the symbolism was when you drop the rock it's easier uh, to walk without all that baggage and weight and pain and I was like oh my gosh that's crazy how they symbolize that you don't have to walk around in life carrying all this baggage that you don't need just let it go and I prayed in the middle I walked out and I felt like a changed man the labyrinth meant so much to me and that's why I use the symbolism of the labyrinth because it was healing for me and the song's Overcomer by Mandisa because I was able to overcome a lot of that pain alright moving on over here to we have the battle cross helmet, gun, boots and then we have a soldier saluting on black and white backgrounds kind of gets lost you kind of really got to look at it but I put taps on there taps is the final resting song your final goodbye 
for a fallen military member. And I put that on there because three years ago I joined a VFW Honor Guard and I serve others by playing taps and honoring the fallen. At funerals, I also play the national anthem and taps at other events. I go to military monuments and memorials and cemeteries and I play it. And a lot of those videos are here on my YouTube. All that being said, after I started getting fixed, getting new skills, overcoming my past, serving others, I still need help. This song is by Chris Young, The Man I Want to Be. Um, I can't do it on my own. I need help. So now I need to make sure that my heart and my mind is in sync with each other and working together. And I can't do that unless I'm strong and have the discipline to do it. So put strong arms in there to say, hey, this is where I'm at today. This is uh, what I need to do is be strong, keep my heart and mind together so I can serve others and move forward in life and quit being so angry. So I was so angry and have cooled off. Because I'm on honor guard and we do funerals a lot, I put the symbolism here of the bugle with a flag. And because God's the center of my life, he's above all. And God, we trust. And he's the top of everything because he has the power, the glory, the might, mercy, grace to do whatever he wants to do. And without him, I have no direction. So, my favorite verse is in there. We got it. With God, I think it's our Matthew 19, 26. Because I guarantee you without that, this wouldn't have happened. This wouldn't happen. And that definitely wouldn't happen. I'd stayed living here. Lost. Fighting demons. Never winning. And just not healing. Not overcoming stuff. So God has literally gotten me through most or all of these things. And with the flag, every time we do a funeral, we always give casings. A lot of people call it the 21-gun salute. That is wrong. It is a three-gun volley. Because sometimes you only have one person firing, or you might have six people firing. So you can't always count up to 21. It's a three-gun volley. And with that, we take retired flags. Um, our uh, auxiliary members at the VFW Post do this, and we give them with those casings. I'm a part of the American flag that was flown over the USA. I can no longer fly. The sun and the winds caused me to become tattered and torn. Please carry me as a reminder that your loved one will never be forgotten. So that's usually in a case with that, and we tuck it into the flag, and the family members accept it on behalf of a grateful nation and its people. Um, and then here, this is an older phone. They used to have the speakers in there, but I did a mirror because I learned that over here, or your path, that in the mirror, um, your mirror is small, your rearview mirror, so you reflect on the past, but you don't live in it. You can look back to see where you've came from, all that, to where you're at. But you have a big windshield in front of you. You've got to live life forward. Do not live in the past. Don't dwell on the past. Reflect on it. Learn from it. Move on. Move forward. Stay positive. And then down over here, this was also from Warrior Path. So Warrior Path taught me labyrinth. Reflect on the past. Get your heart and mind together. And that's a triangle. And that's another three-pointed object. God, family, country. Three things that help me heal. There's three colors. I got red and black. Red is because of anger. Black is because my life was dark in the past. But I got blue. And blue is actually my favorite color. I like purple too, but blue is to help me cool off. Anyway, that's my piece. Hope you liked it. Make sure you check out the songs. If you haven't heard them, go ahead and you can scan this code or just go to my YouTube channel and look for that playlist, Trauma Life Songs, and you'll see all the songs that's represented in here. And I'm going to leave you with this, the silhouette of a church on the outside borders of my project. Hey y'all, I had to uh, take some time between the end of that last video to this one and kind of recoup. Uh, I was kind of rushed 
in that last video uh, was not being kicked out, but the museum had already closed and they were trying to get me out of there, so I kind of rushed through it. But um, in doing so, I forgot a couple things I wanted to mention for the end of this video, and uh, that's what I want to do now. But uh, <clears throat> if you look at the overall piece, uh, with all the traumas or life events, each one has a song, and the reason I like music uh, is because music got me through a lot of this stuff. Um, each one has a theme song, you know, I mentioned that kind of earlier, but um, they always say that there's a song out there for exactly what you're going through, or if you listen to a song, it kind of like takes the words right out of your mouth, so you can definitely relate a lot to music. Uh, in, in your current situation and uh, there's been a lot of dark times a lot of sad times a lot of anger times and there's been songs that related uh, to a lot of those things uh, all that being said you know as I've grown from anger to cooling off and learning skills um, one of the biggest things I've learned through warrior path uh, is just called post-traumatic growth PTG and uh, you don't have to live with PTSD. You can turn that PTSD into PTG uh, by using these skills and intentionally implementing them. Uh, and it's not easy. It's hard work. Uh, but if you do the work, the work will work, if that makes sense. Uh, it works. Uh, but if you're not going to do the work, if you can just stay stuck in your rut, um, I chose to dig myself out. I got tired of being run over and feeling like, you know, crap all the time. So I needed to do something about it. And I chose to, you know, and that's when I admitted I had a problem. And that problem is me and my issues, my mentality, my negative thinking. And that's what I said, you know, things got to change. And that starts with me. And I've learned how to change that negative thinking using CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, challenging those thoughts that were wrong. And uh, creating new thoughts, positive thoughts out of them. And that's part of post-traumatic growth. You know, trauma will, will knock you down. But hey, <laughs> I get back up again because I'm resilient. Um, but you, you can choose to stay down and keep being a victim. Or you can choose that that's not the life for you and do something about it. And I did. And I've, got, I've come a long, long way, uh, especially over the last seven years. Um, if you really, really sit down and get to know me, then you'll realize the growth I've done and the maturing I have um, successfully grew in, I guess you could say. Sorry, lost for words there. Um, TBIs, sometimes I just forget how to say things. Um, but anyway... Um, the other thing I like about the acronym post-traumatic growth is PTG is uh, being a firm believer in that everything happens for a reason. And for me, I think that that reason is everything's in God's timing. So PTG, perfect timing of God. So whenever things are happening to you or not happening to you or you're wanting them to or not wanting them to, they'll happen when they're supposed to happen in God's perfect timing. He will make those things happen if they're supposed to happen. It's all his will, not ours. We want, 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 want. But if that's not the plan that God has for our life, we're not going to get it. Or if he needs to, you know, give you a wake up call or something like that, um, he will. And I'm going to talk about a wake up call here in just a second before I get out of here. But uh, looking at this overall piece here, the top of it is the cross, which of course symbolizes Jesus. And Jesus was the ultimate servant. Um, he gave the ultimate sacrifice, you know, of all. Some gave all, all gave some. Jesus gave all. He died for our sins so that we could, you know, live forever in eternal life with God. And uh, that's a big sacrifice. But, you know, prior to him making that sacrifice, he served others. And if we're called to live like Jesus, then that's what I do, you know, just serve others, help them out. And that's why I do funerals for free. I'm there to just pay it forward, use my God gift, uh, my God given talents and, and honor the fallen. Um, and I do other service too, like I mentioned earlier, but, um, 
I want to be more like him, so I got to serve others in almost any possible way that I can and help out. Uh, but if I kind of back up on a few of the things I mentioned earlier, um, I had a conversation with my father-in-law one day um, who was not really around during my wife's childhood because he was a railroad worker and he was gone a lot at work. So he didn't really get to spend a lot of time with her as she grew up. And I've been given this golden opportunity, that second chance that I mentioned earlier. And, um, you know, my therapist says, what are you doing with it? And I said, you know, I'm effing it up. I'm throwing it away. Um, I had this really good heart to heart conversation with him. And he said that he would have done anything to be in my shoes that I'm in today. I mean, yes, I'm disabled, but somewhat abled. I just I can't work full time. Uh, it's hard for me to deal with uh, a lot of the noises and different kind of working environments thanks to my hyperacusis rare ear condition that makes me super sensitivity, super sensitive to noises. But um, he said that he would have loved to be in my shoes. And I over here at the time, this, you know, five or six years ago, um, didn't really see it. You know, and, and I'm glad I listen to an older gentlemen. You know, I listen to wisdom. I listen to people that are smarter than me and uh, wise. And he said that, uh, he basically opened my eyes. He said, look, um, you have this golden opportunity that many men would die to be in. And you pretty much just don't need to screw it up. And that's exactly what I was doing. And he was getting irritated with it. So he just told me in a tough, loving kind of way. Um poked me in the chest and says you know don't do this take the opportunity that you're given and uh you know make the best of it and so you know I took that to heart you know um it meant a lot so that was that was pretty cool that, that he brought that up to me um because I didn't even realize that I was literally throwing away you know being here with my kids promised to give him a dad that I was that I never had but I physically was there but mentally was checked out um Kids need, you know, you mentally, emotionally as well. And for the longest times, because of all this trauma, I was hard hardened, uh, hard hearted, heart hardened. <laughs> um, I was just closed off. Uh, but when I started to change, um, I started to be more vulnerable, more transparent and open and kind of more loving. And um, it's some things I've never done before. Um, but in that and in, in the new advice and stuff that I've been given, I've learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And that was uncomfortable for me, you know, to hear those things, to try to live that way and change my ways and be more positive. I've just never been that in my life, you know, so changing my ways for the good uh, was not comfortable for me. But I've done it enough now where now that uncomfortable has become comfortable and I'm OK. You know, I'm in a new rut, uh, like a new groove here. And, um, it's good, you know, and I'm going to stay on the good, you know, in the good ruts. Um, but I, I don't want to like take advantage anymore, you know, and just kind of throw away my chance and I'm trying to make the best of it now these days. And that's why, you know, I'm trying to be a family man, trying to be, you know, a good dad, trying to be a good husband and try to be a good Christian and just help out where I can and just, um, other vets that are going through stuff or even non-veterans because I've talked to civilians who has been through some messed up stuff and I've shared with them things that I've learned that I know that can help them you know and that's kind of like where I'm at today you know and how I've been called to just serve others and even if it's just an ear to listen to somebody you're giving your time to that person and and um, listening and, and that, that can mean the world to them, you know, and they need that in that moment. And so I offer that, um, wow, it's just, this is a lot, um, a whole lot of stuff. Um, I'm trying to summarize this to finish up and be done. Um, okay. So I have it summarizing. I've just lived a lifetime full of traumas and struggles and uh being lost not on how to get through it uh but going through a couple different programs giving me skills and therapy and counseling 
uh, and of course using uh, my God. All of those things have helped me to learn how to get through it and how to struggle well and uh, quit being a victim, um, overcoming adversity and, and uh, all the pain and suffering that I've, you know, endured in my entire life. So uh, this app, just app, this phone, this whole project here, I, I'm going to call it a phone, even though the flag, the view going across is outside the phone above it. Um, that's just a symbolism of my service today, but it it's also shows it at the bottom of the phone as well and in the phone. So, but this, this look into my life is just, it just shows that, you know, if I can get through things with the right tools and training and people, um, and advice, you can too. So don't think that, you know, whatever you may be going through is the end of the world because it's not. And it may look uh, like there's no way out, but there is. You just got to find it. And that's the hard part. And I know it's not easy. And one thing I've always been told, and I always stick to this, is I never said it would be easy, but it would be worth it. So keep fighting. Stay strong. Keep your head up. Keep your chin up. Look for the positivity and get the help you need if you need it, you know, and I guarantee you, your life will turn around, um, but it won't be easy. You're going to have to put the work in, um, and that's the hard part, but it's rewarding, so uh, stick to it. <sighs> All that being said, um, if you know of how to get a book started, I'd love to write like an autobiography about this, and... I don't even know where to start to do that, but I would love to write a book and get it published one day. Uh, I think that'd be super cool. So if you know anyone or any, yeah, someone that knows how to do that or how to get started and all that, send them my way, please. <laughs> that'd be great. Um, I got the story. I just got to get it written down and put into a book, edited and uh, organized and sent out there for people to read. You know, that trauma don't have to be the end of your world. You can get through it just like I did. So anyway, that's it. I do greatly appreciate it if you're actually still watching this video. So thank you so much. Um, please leave any comments. I would love to read them. Um, and this year I'm not on social media. I've deleted all my social media except for YouTube, this channel here. So um you're not going to be able to get a hold of me outside of this unless you personally know me and have my contact info. But uh, please leave comments. I would love to read them. I will definitely reply to them. Um, but I got off social media this year because this is my year of healing um, and getting healthier uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And uh, social media just took up way too much of my time and I was way distracted and undisciplined to you know say no to those apps. So I just got rid of them all together. And so I'm going to be working on myself, and that hence is the heart and mind, the very last app in this project here. Um, i got to get my heart and mind together. So when these two are synced up, I can be even stronger in healing in, in, in my life and serving others and not procrastinating or neglecting people that are important. Um, because for many years, like, I've been throwing it away and blowing it off. And uh, the more I stay distracted, the less time I give to the people that matter. So this is the year of change. And I'm going to focus more intentionally on those important people in my life. Anyway, that's it. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Y'all take care. Have a good day. God bless. Strouth, the mouth is out.